Entomenolic acid, also known as 2-amino benzoic acid, can be used to make azadoids, saccharine or several drugs. I want to use it to react it later with methanol, which produces methyl entrenolate, an ester which smells like grapes. The first step in the synthesis is the preparation of thalamide, which will be then converted into entrenolic acid. For the synthesis, 10 grams of phthalic anhydride and 2 grams of urea are needed. The obtained thalamide is then reacted with sodium hypobromide solution, which will be prepared from sodium hydroxide and bromine. For neutralization and precipitation, hydrochloric acid and glacial acetic acid are also needed. Considering the workup, a bunch of ethanol, water, as well as activated carbon should be available. 10 grams of phthalic and hydride are added to an Erlmeyer flask, followed by 2 grams of urea. The flask is then shaken to mix up the chemicals as much as possible. The mixture is then heated to 135C to liquefy it. Once the chemicals are molten together, that's when the reaction starts. The overall reaction is shown above. Basically, one of the amine groups of the urea attacks one of the carbonyls, producing an intermediate, which then splits into ammonia and CO2 gas. The ammonia is then able to react with another molecule of phthalic anhydride. After some minutes, the molten will froth up, which signifies the end of the reaction. After cooling down, the crude phthalamide is treated with water to dissolve any remaining urea. It is then recrystallized from ethanol. At the end, we are left with about 8.2 grams of nice, dry phthalamide. The yield was about 83%. For the next step, I had to crack one of my bromine ampules. When working with bromine, everything should be cooled as much as possible to restrain evaporation. I weighed out around 8.6 grams of bromine. If you carefully observe the scale, you may notice how actually fast the bromine is vaporizing. The bromine is then added to 55 milliliters of a 20% sodium hydroxide solution. The bromine is reacting with the hydroxide ion forming hyperbromide. Shaking the flask will dissolve remaining bromine. For the next reaction, all reagents are chilled to about negative 10 C. To a 250 mL flask, a mixture of 8 grams of our freshly prepared thalamide and 5 mL of water is added. Slowly, the hyperbromide solution is added, taking care of the temperature. The overall reaction can be simplified as shown. In terms of mechanism, we have a so-called Hoffman rearrangement going on. The Hoffman rearrangement is an organic reaction used to convert a primary amide to a primary amine. This is done by using a base, halogen, water and heat. The reaction begins with the nucleophilic attack of the hydroxide ion on one of the partially positive hydrogens. This forms an anion, which is then attacked by the bromine, forming a halomide. A second deprotonation by the base forms water, which splits off. This provides an intermediate, where then a bromide ion is separated. That leads to the isocyanate group, which you can see in the bottom right corner. After hydrolysis, we are left with the switch-ionic molecule. The molecule is again rearranged and the carboxylic acid group is decarboxylated, which splits CO2 gas off. Finally, we are left with the primary amine. After the final addition, the flask is dried and 6.5 grams of sodium hydroxide are added. The solution is then heated to 80C to complete the last step of the reaction mentioned earlier. Next, the liquid will be cooled and transferred to a beaker. Slowly, 17.3 ml of concentrated HCl are added. This will neutralize any remaining sodium hydroxide. Then 8.1 mL of glacial acetic acid are added. This will precipitate the entrenolic acid. Acetic acid is used because strong acids like hydrochloric or sulfuric acid would protonate the amino group. This would form a soluble salt. The crude entrenolic acid can be then filtered off. It is then recrystallized in hot water. I also added some activated charcoal, trying to get rid of the colored impurities. At the end I was left with a really bad yield of 
Also, I couldn't get rid of the color, even though I recrystallized it multiple times. My overall yield, starting from phallic and hydride, was around 